That's right, folks. Today we're gonna do another side imaging video because that other video, I won't say it blew up, but it did pretty darn good. And uh, definitely a lot of interest in there about side imaging. So what we're gonna do different on this episode, which is gonna be really cool, is I know where the fish are at. So we're actually gonna go over there and we're gonna scan it. I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the side imaging, the Solux. We can talk a little bit more about the Solux versus the Helix and the advantages, etc. So that's what this episode is gonna be about. Hope you enjoy it. We are gonna catch fish. We're definitely putting the live scope down and catching fish just to show you that those are actually crappie. We're gonna show them. You're gonna see it, what it looks like, what you should be looking for on your hummingbird or whatever your unit you're using for side imaging. Before we get to the location where I know there are crappie, let's just talk about the layout of a side imaging, okay? This represents our boat right here. This is the column underneath the boat and that's dictating how deep the water is directly underneath the boat. So when you're looking at side imaging, you're always looking at past tense, things that have already passed you. So my transducer is located in the back and it is reading from the back of the boat, meaning we've already passed it. So typically when you're going over a, top, a item and you see one, you're gonna have to throw your buoy back or circle back to get it. But this definitely represents, the black area right here, represents the floor of the lake and how deep it is. Now, one of the most important things that people are gonna talk about is the width in which you use your side imaging. I have currently have it set at 75. This is perfect when you're looking for schools of fish. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you the difference of how these fish look with 75 versus 35 on your side image. When you have it stretched out to 75, you're gonna, it's gonna be a lot more difficult to see things, which I still think 75 is a good number to start with to find things. But at the end of the day, it's a lot more difficult to find things because they're gonna be smaller. So we're gonna put this on mega. You're gonna see the uh, light go out, just a, go down a little bit. See how it's gonna change the actual visual of it. And that's truly just going down to, I think, sensitivity wise between the two. So we're gonna check those out too. There's 800 kilohertz, and that's probably just about right right there. All right, right there, we got a major wind today, so hopefully this wind sock is working, but you can see we've got tons of crappie right here, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like on the side imaging. In a scenario like this, all I'm gonna do is put my, my uh, trolling motor on spot lock and kind of let it feed up against the, the wind. There's our first fish. Not a big fish, but our first fish. Right there. Now look at the size of these schools. I mean, and that's what's gonna be great, seeing these fish on live, on side imaging, just to see what that would look like. Easy. See me dropping down right here, coming right over the pile. Nice and slow coming through it. This is a good fish. Man, we hope this is a crappie. This is a picture fish. <laughs> you got check that out, folks. That's a freaking pig right there. That's a heavy fish. Heavy, heavy fish. Look at that body. Good fish. All I'm doing right now is I'm casting out there about 30, 40 feet. It's not the most aggressive bite, even though there's a gazillion fish out there. Um, 
but the key is really just to have as many passes through them as you can and eventually you'll get somebody that's really aggressive i've changed baits a couple times even um, sometimes i'll pop it to see if i can't get someone's attention in there i can barely see it with all this wind and uh and the fish there but you know you gotta love fishing in situations where you have so many fish in your in your face it's uh at least we know we're throwing in the right direction. We just have to figure out what it is they would prefer to have. And I'm just gonna show you what this looks like. Now my speed is set at four. And you can see all these shadows right here. This is a ton of fish right here. A ton of fish. You can see the wet white marks here. This is what you're looking for right here, folks. The white marks right there, that is loaded up with crappie. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'll bring that as close as I can right there. That is all crappie. So is all this right here. And again, you can see them absolutely stacked up right here. And that's under the mega right there. I'll switch that over to maybe, let's just go 455 megahertz. Now check that out. That really pops right there. Look at that. That's crappie, folks. That's all crappie. I don't know if it gets any better than this showing you. Um, you know, there's so many crappie that it, you know the shadows aren't even really showing up but that's uh that's truly a great image right there now you can see some shadows here shallow so that always intrigues me when i see shadow shadows shallow um, i love when fish are shallow because i feel like they're feeding so really good images there so let's move that up to 800 and see what it looks like just to kind of have a comparison I think that'd be good not too impressed right I'm not too impressed we're gonna go back to mega and again this is a Solix 12 and I like to use the side imaging mostly for structure finding structure not necessarily finding fish my home lakes a little bit unique from the standpoint of uh, that they do school up they do come in big groups like that but most of the time on your home lakes you're gonna be looking at side imaging for structure and yes you'll be able to see some fish on the side imaging of course but really then the real you dive into it with your live scope and that's the real critical part finding out if there's really truly fish and usually if you find fish on some structure in a cove you can bet that most of the structure in that cove is going to have some level of fish on it so they typically stay in the same areas they like it there's a reason why they're there so to speak so again this is the water column the water column is really deep right here so we've gotten down to 22 feet getting some artifacts there on the left side that could be my prop so I'll raise my prop just to see if it is it is not my prop so I'll have to figure out what that is but that is a Solix and I tell you what, that was really good. We're going to show that again here. But let me talk about, um, you know, a big part right now. It's early in the morning right now, just so you know. And uh, we've got extremely great weather in terms of we've got a high wind, which is going to keep a lot of boaters off. We have a couple boaters out here regardless. But and also it's overcast. So it's perfect for catching tons of fish. Uh, in terms of the Solix and the Helix, it's really important. The, the biggest deal I see is that, you know, Solix is going to be a touchscreen monitor. It's going to take a lot of energy juice to power it. Helix is not. So a lot less power to power a Helix. I think that's an advantage. I also love the interface on a Helix. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. It's easy, it's quick. It's probably what I should have gotten on this boat. Um, but I'll tell you, and I probably will go back to a Helix. I don't necessarily need the Solixes. Based on their power, the, the consumption they have, also based off the fact the complexity of the, the actual interface is not the easiest thing. Now there are some functions that are really cool, but I have to say that I think I would value um, a Solix over a, I'm sorry, I value a Helix over a Solix. The cost difference is just too great, and I just don't know if the impact is there for, for an actual solo. So this is, um, like I said, a 12 inch unit. I usually had a, I think I had a 10 inch Helix, a nine inch Helix. Those things are a perfect size. So try them out. I think they're, 
again it's all about the interface and how easy it is to maneuver around and i think the helix has got it solux is great don't get me wrong but uh, i don't know if it's any better my personal opinion i don't know so um let's go catch some more of those fish i hope you appreciated that i am going to show you some more side imaging of those fish just so you can see them again and maybe mess with the uh the actual span of side imaging i like to say that it's cutting a, a, a cut right through the lake and so you can quickly mark structure much more effective than a live scope and, and you don't you know, obviously run down your trolley motor battery so. now in terms of the battery power we briefly tucked i used amped outdoors i love amped outdoors uh lithium batteries uh, can't say enough good things but certainly go to whoever is servicing your batteries and gives you the best service i think that's what it's all about in terms of those products uh, i've had a couple problems with my amped outdoors i'm not you know I, I, I think you're gonna have problems with just about everything in life electronic wise and you know as long as they're catering to you and making sure that you're taken care of and getting you uh, what you need I think that's the most important thing and so there's a lot of great lithium companies out there uh, just make sure you're going one that you know supports uh, the angler when you run into a problem when one goes bad and they will you want somebody that's saying hey I'll take care of you no worries Good fish here. That's what I'm talking about. Picture fish. Wow. That's a good fish right there, folks. That's a pound and a half, pound point seven, one point seven. That's a that's a good fish for my home lake right there. And all I was doing was trolling, just rolling back with them, following the wind. That's freaking great pit. That's a great fish. Now I changed my bait head size on that one right there. You probably saw it. That's a good fish. You wonder if that's matching the hatch a little bit more in a scenario like this. Now we got a million fish and they've got a lot of fish to eat on as well. So getting as close to that hatch as you can possibly get is a big advantage. Uh, so we just made our first drop with that bigger jig head. That's a 1 16th ounce jig head. And uh, we're gonna see if that may, plays a factor. Great picture right there, man. You can see, and I'm always holding on to the braid, big time on this type of, where you're just vertical jigging right over a bunch of fish. You can hold on to that braid and you can set that hook as soon as you feel anything that's irregular. All right, again, sitting still. I've got it at 455 megahertz. You can start seeing the splotches and those are definitely crappie and the white marks are crappie. So a little skewed, but you could tell by sitting back here, you could target these shadows and these big black blobs right there are the shadows in there. Small black shadows right there, tons of them right here as well. I went ahead and spanned it out just a little bit further to 80 foot because I'm starting to think I like that picture the best. So then all I'm doing is going back with live scope as we're doing right now and I'm searching and seeing what we were seeing. Now I've already ran over a couple marks that were probably what we were seeing um, but like kind of what I suspected that it's not a lot of fish. It's just kind of here or there and um, From here we kind of just really want to just roll out on a point And again see if there's any fish now because of the way my lake plays They like the windy points. So right here whereas the wind is going to start to pick up is probably where they're going to be at if they're going to be on this point point. 